Let's bake bread for the first time. Hi everybody, thanks so much for joining me. My name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead. And today my kitchen looks awfully different, doesn't it? Actually, I am in my friend's kitchen, my friend Andrea. Um, I am coming over to her house today to teach her how to make homemade bread. Welcome, Andrea. Hi. <laughs> so before we get too far into the video, I do want to introduce um, Andrea's two children that are here with us today. She has another daughter who's older and who's in school, and her husband is at work. He teaches at a high school. Um, so we have Ellie, baby Ellie. You may see her, you will see her in our video throughout different times. And Grant. How old are you, Grant? Two. You're two. You may be seeing, you will be seeing Grant in the background. Um, so, you know, one thing that I wanted to say is I know that everybody's life is busy. And, you know, you barely ever have a time where you can just sit here and just make your bread like a perfect little, you know, person at home. Um, things are busy. Things are going on. Uh, this recipe is, you know, easy enough for a busy mom to make. It's easy enough to make with a baby on your hip who is grabbing at the ingredients. Um, and I'd like to show you how easy that is. So, um, you know, our, on our channel, uh, we really hope to, uh, you know, teach people about more sustainable living, um, how to live a more simple life, and how to be more frugal in our lives. And um, baking bread at home is one of the, the great ways to save money um, and to live a little bit more sustainably and to kind of take charge of the things that we put into our bodies. So not only will you save money at home by making your own bread, but you have more control of the ingredients uh, that are in there. Now, uh, before the video today, uh, Kevin and I figured out like a, a simple kind of cost comparison about whether or not you're really saving money by making your own bread. Um, now, what we did was figure out how many cups of flour are in a five pound bag of flour and then compare that to the amount of cups of flour that are needed for the recipe we're going to be using today. And what we determined is that you can make six and a half loaves of bread with one five pound bag of flour. So if you figure that um, a bag of like just standard run of the mill um, flour at the store is probably about two dollars or maybe a little bit more. Um, that is about the cost that you will pay for maybe one or one and a half loaves of bread at the store. So you're definitely saving costs that way. Uh, we also figured if you are buying organic flour, if you choose to use organic flour, uh, there's still a cost savings to using organic flour when it comes to making homemade bread. Um, a five pound a five pound bag of organic flour costs about $4.50. But if you're buying organic bread at the store, you're gonna pay about that much for just one loaf of bread. So it still makes sense if you have a change to organic products, it still makes sense to make um, your bread from organic flour. It's still a lot of cost savings. Next up is that um, I'm gonna teach Andrea how to make bread. Now, full disclosure here, I used to be terrible at making bread. I didn't make bread. I made doorstops. Um, so I've gained a little bit of confidence, mainly with the recipe that we're going to be making today, and now I can make beautiful bread. Phew! So we're going to start with the, the uh, dry ingredients, which include two and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons or one packet of yeast, two tablespoons of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. We're gonna put all of that into our mixing bowl and just mix it up a little bit. That's good. Okay. And now we're gonna get the uh, wet ingredients ready. Um, we're gonna use a cup of milk, but the, will, the milk needs to be warmed up to somewhere between 120 and 130 degrees. Uh, you can either um, warm that up in your microwave or um, on the stove top, whichever you prefer. And the reason we're warming that is to activate the yeast. The yeast needs to be warm in order to activate and start working on your bread. Um, with, the, with the milk, we're also going to add in um, two tablespoons of some kind of oil. Uh, you can use olive oil, canola oil, any kind of vegetable oil, or um, coconut oil. Although you're going to want to make sure that the coconut oil is in a liquid form. Uh, we're also going to add one egg. 
Now, in this recipe, because we're warming up the milk um, and we need to activate the yeast, the best thing for you to do is to use an egg that's at room temperature. Um, that way it won't cool down your mixture too much to um, prohibit the uh, yeast from activating. Just, do we need go to ahead in. Go ahead, go on. ahead. Just put it in. Okay. And now we're going to stir it in a little bit. Now let's go ahead and crack the egg in. two minutes and now we need to add just a tiny little bit more of the flour in the bowl to kind of soak up some of that stickiness. Right now if you were to take it out of the bowl and start to knead it on the counter it would be way too sticky. Uh, so we're going to use up to a quarter cup of extra flour while the mixer is on low uh, to kind of bring it, bring it together in a ball. Okay? Continue doing this kind of back and forth until your dough um, comes onto the hook into a ball and when you poke at it, it can be a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky, but not too much. We don't want to have to do too much work when we pull it out and start kneading it on the counter. Okay, so the dough has all pretty much gathered around the hook and when you poke at it, it's a little bit tacky, it's definitely soft, um, but it's not so sticky that it's coming off on your hands. So we are going to um, clear an area of the um, of the counter, and we're going to we're going to flour the counter pretty well. If you don't mind that I just stuck my hand in your flour, I don't care. <laughs> I'm just taking over like it's not at home. Hey, you're the teacher. And we're going to take this off. We're going to pull the yeah pull that down into the bowl. And that's sticky. Yep, it'll be okay. I've seen them on TV. Strip the dough from the hook. Yeah. Never this is definitely a dough on the soft side versus yeah. on the dry side. Okay. And do so I we'll take the hook out of there and the bowl. We'll take the bowl out. Careful, she's coming down. Yeah. I'm pretty good at stepping up. Yeah. And we're going to use the spatula. Now we have a dough scraper, but we can use the spatula mm -hmm. and scrape it out onto. Uh, the counter. So you're going to start kneading it, okay. and we're going to knead it 50 times. Okay. So, so you can press down on press it. Press down on it. And then kind of fold it in half. Fold it in half. Yep. And then and kind of move it around. It. Yep. That's two. Oh, there you go. 49, 50. Okay. So we have kneaded it enough. We're just going to put it in a bowl um, so that it can rest for 10 minutes. It's not going to rise in here. It's just going to rest. And we'll be back after it rests for 10 minutes. Okay, so the bread dough has rested for 10 minutes, and uh, the next step is to just get it into the pan. We have this bread pan, we sprayed it. Uh, we just need to take out the dough, kind of put it into a loaf shape and plop it in there. That's all there is to it. Nothing fancy schmancy, just kind of do your best. Kind of squeeze it thinner so it kind of fits in the pan. And plop it in there. Yep. We're going to cover it with a towel, and then we're going to let that rise uh, for at least 30 minutes. It may take an hour. It depends on how warm the room temperature is, but we're going to put it in the oven when it's about one inch above the pan, okay? Uh, when we get to that point, when it's almost ready, we're going to preheat the oven to 375. So we'll see you back in a bit. Okay, well, it has uh, been sitting here rising oh, for maybe an hour, but we've also been talking and having you know, coffee and, and having a good time. So, um, you can see that it is nice and risen. It fills up the entire pan. Um, it is definitely over the top of the pan. So we're gonna stick this into the oven. It's been preheated to 375. 
Uh, we're going to put it in for 15 minutes, but then we're going to open up the oven and cover it with foil. This is going to brown beautifully, but if halfway through you don't put a piece of foil over top of it, then it's going to get too brown. So 30 minutes on 375, halfway through, open up and put some uh, foil on top of it. So we'll check back with you guys after it's completely done and beautiful. Uh, see you in a minute. So there you go. Look at it. It's all done and perfect and beautiful. It came out so amazingly. Look at how tall that got and nice and brown and crunchy. So, um, you know, I want to share a secret with you. Um, if you follow us on Facebook at all, you may have noticed that uh, recently I posted a picture of hot dog buns. Well, those hot dog buns were made with the same exact recipe, just cut into pieces and formed into little hot dogs and put into a pan. Uh, this would also do really well for uh, hamburger buns and dinner rolls. Uh, so uh, give that a try as well. So, Andrea. Yeah. Was it, was it very hard? No, it was not very hard. Will you, do it, will you do it again? I will do it again, probably by myself when you're not at my house. <laughs> you can always call me. You can I call. Will. I can I run over that. real quick if you need my help. I will do that. So you guys, I hope that you gain enough confidence to try making bread if you haven't already. Um, it really is very simple. It tastes so good. Um, and if you have made bread before or do it a lot, just give this, give this a try. Um, as always, you guys, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Before you go, don't forget to like this video and leave us a comment. We love it. And press the subscribe button below. Until next time, take care and God bless.